السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربي زدني علما ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يعمل سوءا او يظلم نفسه ثم يستغفر الله يجد الله غفورا رحيما صدق الله العظيم This ayah that I have recited to you comes from Surah An-Nisاء This is ayah number 110 In this ayah Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is communicating is talking to us the human beings and there's a very very simple message that you and I are living very soulfully this blessed month of Ramadan and the idea is to continue with this message after the month of Ramadan. Even though this ayah is not in context of Ramadan, but this ayah is so beautiful that by this ayah a person can live his or her whole life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ Anyone who does evil or does anything wrong on his soul, he does zulm on his soul, ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرَ الله. Then he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَجِدَ اللَّهِ He will going to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala غفور, all forgiving, and rahima, all merciful. Now this is a beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings forth in the Qur'an. And so many times, if you notice in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings these very beautiful, soft names. Look at the beginning of the Qur'an. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmid Deen. Alif Lam Mim Dalika Al Kitabu La Rayba Fihi. Hudalil Muttaqin. Guidance for the one who are the Muttaqin. So these are the beautiful ayahs. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many names, countless, but I'll tell you 99 of them. Lahul Asma'ul Husna, beautiful names, but only 99 of them have been exposed to us. Some ulama have went and collected more than 99 names, they've written books on it. But 99 names have at least been told to us. Among all of those names, there is only one name that has the name that has a lot of power in a sense that gives you trembling heart. Al Muntaqim. Besides that, all the names 98 are showing his mightiness, his merciness, his beauties. That he is the creator Al Khaliq, he is the fashioner Al Musawwir. He is a Tawab, he is a Rahim, he is al Ghaffar, he is al Ghafur, he is al Wadud, he is al Qudus. He is so beautiful. And even that name al Muntaqim is between two names here and two names here which are full of mercy. Like al Bar al Tawab. So it's pretty much like something very sharp is wrapped up in a very thick cloth. So this sharpness will not going to affect. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in hadith al-Qudsi that my rahmah supersedes my wrath. Because I'm so merciful. I'm extremely merciful. Now think about it. Each and every day we break rules. Even in the fasting, people break rules. But he's so forgiving. He's so merciful. Now look at his mercy, he says, if you forgetfully eat or drink while you're fasting, it's okay, your fast is not voided. Because you didn't do it intentionally. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so merciful on that soul, that He made that soul forget 
so that the soul can get something out on that day. Maybe their body needed that particular thing that time of the day. He just made that person forget that person ate and he said, okay, your fast is still accepted. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why he's saying in this ayah of Surah An-Nisa, come to me after you have committed wrongs and you will going to find me that I am so forgiving and so merciful. This month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, the only month out of the 12 months in the Arabic language, this is the only month which is mentioned in the Quran. Shahru Ramadan. Now when is the Quran written? Quran was written way before the beginning of any of the creations. And it was kept in Lawh al-Mahfuz. And the time when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the people, the Quran was revealed slowly and gradually to him from the first heavens. And over the period of 23 years it was completed. So unlike the book of Moses, which was all given at once. This came slowly and gradually. But think about it, this ayah was written when? Before the beginning of times. Shahru Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this name and made it so that the people would name this month so. This is a very pan-picked month by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then why did he do all of this arrangement? Because Shahru Ramadan الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Because this is the month he decided to begin the revelation of Qur'an. This is the month where he transferred the entire Qur'an in one night from the seventh heaven to the first heaven. And then from the first heaven to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, the first revelation came in the month of Ramadan. And then from there on in the next 23 years, slowly and gradually the Qur'an was unfolded. There are ayahs in the Qur'an that are in from the Meccan period. There are ayahs from the Qur'an that are from the Madani period. Now, when we say the ayahs are from the Madani period, it is quite possible that those ayahs were revealed at the time of the conquest of Makkah. But the period was the Madani period, when the Prophet was dwelling in Medina. The ayahs could have been revealed in Tabuk, but those are from the Madani period. And now if you look at some of these surahs, some ayahs are from the Meccan period, some ayahs are from the Madani period. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala organized this book for us so beautifully. And then when you read a surah and you're like, subhanallah, look at the choosing of the words, look at the beauty. Now think about it, when we stand in taraweeh prayer, qiyam al-layl, we listen to somebody reciting the Quran to us, and we have done this all our life. Have we made effort a little bit to understand? Just a little bit. I know that this today probably, the so-and-so person leading the taraweeh will going to recite maybe these surahs. Maybe the first eight, we know that there are some, somewhere around the first or two, three juz. So we make some effort before we come in to read something about it. To maybe know a little bit of a translation. Maybe of one page. At least you will be able to enjoy that one page. You will know what is being said. You will understand. You will really, truly live those raka'as that you will pray behind the imam. You will know the meaning. <coughs> Think about the beauties of small surahs, like Surah Al-Nasr. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Three verses. But if you know when they were revealed, how they were revealed, and what is the message in them, it will be so moving when you hear these three verses. When these verses were revealed, the companions started crying. Those who understood the message, they started to cry because now the message is about to end. The reason the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was being sent is now coming to its closing because he was here to spread the light of faith. The light of faith is now spreading. So, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ When Allah's victory came, وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ And you, O Prophet, see with your own eyes that thousands and thousands of them are entering the fold of Islam. Now think about it. 
Now the Prophet is standing where in Makkah. This is the same Makkah that people would not even speak to him. Besides his family, nobody accepted his message. Slowly and gradually, a handful of friends, 70, 80 people, 100 people, most of them were forced to migrate from the Medina to Ethiopia. Well, not once, but twice. Handful of people, 13 years of misery. And now standing in the same place of Makkah, he has an army of 10,000 marching into Makkah. He goes into Tabuk, an army of 30,000, all in a matter of few years. You see with your own eyes that the armies of people are entering into Islam. He goes for the last hajj, the only hajj that he performed after the hajj was made mandatory. Had over 100,000 people, over 120,000 people. Subhanallah. In the matter of 22 years, such a big change. And then he lived a few months after, and then the 23rd year he passed away. And the companions who had their eyes on these ayahs, they truly understood the message. So when we be stand behind the Imam, when we are praying by ourselves, how much of this heart, which should be like a sponge, but we have destroyed it by making it so hard that nothing moves it. This is the month to make that happen. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, As-siyamu junnatun. It is a shield. Shield against what? Shield against those things that have corroded your soul, corrupted your soul all 11 months. Now Allah has given you a spiritual shield to guard yourself. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how is this a shield? Now look at it. I will not going to accept your fast if you do not pray five times a day. Oh, so I must pray five times a day for my fast to be accepted. Yes, and you should restrain from evil talks. You shouldn't fight. You shouldn't eat. You shouldn't drink in the times that I'm asking you not to do. You have to read my book so that you are closer to me. Whatever you can, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Whatever you can, but come to me. That's the message. That's why the message is not for a day. Other people celebrate a day, two day, three day. There's a whole month of celebration. Why? Why a month full of celebration? Because repetition help people improve. Everybody's at a different state. Repetition help improve. And now what happens after the repetition is over, we give up. We give up. We don't do anything for all this hard work that we did. It's pretty much you send your kid to a school and he quit in the final year. He quit when he's about to graduate. He didn't take that one course that he needed to graduate and he said, I'm not taking it. So this is what exactly what we do. We quit the day of the Eid. So this month is to bring about the change. So now the change has come. Change has come. Each one of us is doing something different that we would not do outside of the Ramadan, but the change must go on. So it is a shield. And in this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes very special arrangements. Very special arrangements for who? For us. He closes the doors of hell. He closes them. He opens the door of heavens. What does that mean? Closes the door of hell. He doesn't want us to go in hell. And he never wants us to go in hell. Now he's even closing the doors. He opens the door of Jannah because he wants us to use this month to enter the Jannah. So who among us will going to do this trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our way into the Jannah. And by the way, there is a special door. There is a special door just for the people who fast. Now think about it. Trillions of people are sitting on the Day of Judgment or standing, doesn't matter. And a man comes in 
And a man comes in, angel comes in and says, whoever among you were fasting, move on one side. How blessed you are going to feel that we're standing out among all these people. Now think about it. We are not many people over here. If somebody walks in over here and calls one of you and says, I have a medal for you for the achievements that you have performed, you're going to feel very, very happy. That so I'm getting recognized in front of the whole community. Now they're the whole humanity, the whole malaika, the whole jinn. They're standing. And these people are set aside. And the guy will say, follow me. Follow me and we'll take them to a door. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the name of the door is ar rayyan And they will be asked to enter through this door. And once all of these people will pass through, the doors will be closed. Special invitation. You know, have you ever been to those parties where there's a guard standing at the door and says, show me your invitation card. And upon seeing the invitation card, only those people are allowed to go who are there. And then the doors are closed. Now, if you are among the people standing outside, you would feel, oh my God, these are so lucky people. But if you're inside, you don't feel that way. Because you're already enjoying what's inside. So the idea is to be among those people that will be called upon and said, okay, you guys, follow through and enter the rayyan and then the door will be closed afterwards. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made these special arrangements by chaining the devil. Now comes a very good question. You know, because this mind is rational, you should ask questions. Never hesitate asking questions. That if the devil is chained, if the devil is chained or the devils are chained, then why people still commit sins in the month of Ramadan? Very valid question. Why? There should be no sin whatsoever. And we will find among the Muslims who fast, who commit sins in the month of Ramadan. And there are many responses to this question. Notice one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? I chained the devil. He didn't say I killed it. He didn't say I killed it. I didn't stop it. I chained him. So his powers of infecting you have been tremendously reduced. But he can still cause fitna in your heart. And he doesn't even have to be from the jinn. He could be from the jinn and from the humans. And also look at it like this. If I tie a lion over here, a hungry lion, and I chain him, you will be only safe if you are out of the reach of the lion. Because lion is chained. He can go to a certain distance. If you do not come in that reach, then you are safe. But if you stand in that reach and expect that you will be safe, you are not going to be safe. So they are chained. But that yet, yet they whisper. And when they whisper in your heart, you follow the trail, you get in that range, they attack. And you commit the sin. But their powers have been reduced. And your powers have been improved. Because the Quran says, we wrote, we prescribed, we wrote it down for you to fast like the people before you. Why? So that you achieve the piety. You become pious. You become pure. You become God-fearing. So now when he attacks in the month of Ramadan, when you're fasting, we're like, ooh, ooh no, I'm fasting. I should hold on to my tongue. I shouldn't fight with anybody. I shouldn't look at haram. But why on the Eid day everything opens up? Because it never went this far. It never hit here. We were constantly waiting for it to get over. Rather than embracing, we were letting him go. So the idea is, accept it. And this Ramadan, have a step forward. Go in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Him. He's our God. If we don't ask Him, who will going to ask Him? He expects us to ask Him. He expects us to cry in front of Him. We are His abd. We are His servants. We are His servants. Just remember that. When you stand in prayers, 
Who are you standing in front of? And what he is capable of doing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تخشوهم Do not be afraid of the people. They're like you. But be God conscious. Because I know what is going in your head. I know what's going in your heart. And one day you have to come to me. And I will go to decide your fate. I, and I'm so merciful. But do you want my mercy? Do you want my rahmaniyat? Do you want me to be rahim to you? Do you want me to be wadud to you? Quddus to you? Because I am al-awwal al-akhir. I am there from the beginning and I'll be there till the end. I am all in all. So fa'ayna tadhabun? Where are you guys going? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the entire children of Adam. That O oh, children of Adam, come to me. Even if you have sinned so much that if you stack them, they will reach the heavens. Come to me. It is not a problem for me to forgive them. But come to me. If you have sinned so much that if you put them horizontally, you may fill the face of the planet Earth. But if you believe in me and you worship me alone, come to me. I will forgive them for you. But you have to come to me. I come to you. I wait for you every night and all time during the day. But you don't come to me. I call you through the people. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You ignore my call. Those people who worship idols, they get up early in the morning, 3.30, 4 in the morning, all year round, and they're worshiping idols. False gods will give them nothing. And we worship a true God and we sleep through the Fajr. The person who should be up is sleeping because he will really truly get a reward. And the person who will get nothing, rather getting up so early in the morning, he is putting more sins on his shoulder by worshiping these false gods, but he's working hard. So we got to pick which direction we want to go. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this blessed month of Ramadan for us to bring change in us, improve us, and get closer to Him. And keep these feelings in our hearts and keep moving on with these feelings. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.